Hey guys, it's Scott with Scotty B Cards, and in this video I want to talk about pitchers and why they are such a tough buy right now. So pitchers historically have never been as collected as hitters. We can see this basically across all generations, even like the top tier pitchers don't really live up to price as the top tier hitters. Of course, there may be an exception or two, but it's kind of what we've seen historically. And right now, we are in a situation where we have not seen many players actually debut in like the last decade that people want to collect. And recently, I've actually been a Yuri Perez fan for the Marlins and he got hurt. I think some news came out his injury lately where it wasn't as serious as people thought. You know, there was concern of having Tommy John. We saw Sandy Alcantara's teammate the year prior have Tommy John. And we're seeing all sorts of pitchers. Garrett Cole got injured. And we're just seeing it become a very common thing with the emphasis on velocity and spin rate. It just seems like pitchers just can't be healthy and they don't have a great longevity and peak anymore so i wanted to look at pitchers as a whole describe who they are in the hobby and if there's any hope for them and like how we can approach their cards so let's talk about the reasons why people don't like pitchers i kind of already discussed it but injury risk is huge we can see all of these pitchers at one point in the hobby were massive they were massive players people wanted their cards their cards were going for a ton of money and they all basically fell off in some capacity players like felix hernandez still could make the hall of fame i uh, madison bumgarner technically could as well because of like his postseason performance do i think either of them will i think felix has a much better chance than bumgarner but we'll have to see so they only play once every five to six days it's another issue with pitchers right so with mike trout you'll see mike trout play every day with aaron judge you'll see aaron judge play every day as long as he stays healthy same with mike trout but overall the position players they're in day in day out so if you go watch the angels or the yankees you can expect to see those players but if you want to watch let's say yamamoto for the dodgers pitch you're not going to see him basically 80 percent of the time and because of that i don't think they're quite as sought after they also have shorter peaks and this is obviously there are exceptions to this rule where some pitchers just pitch forever and they reinvent themselves and they have a completely different game. But those type of players are few and far between. And people just don't care about a lot of the feats of these pitchers, right? So if a pitcher, there's a couple of things that really only matter. 3,000 strikeouts is big. Specific number of wins, 200 wins, 300 wins. Obviously, 300 will never happen again, most likely, the way that pitchers are handled. And that that's just what it is. So we have to kind of take a step back and look at how we're going to evaluate these pitchers moving forward but these type of feats aren't very sought after in comparison to like an mvp for a position player pitchers have really hard time winning an mvp and cy youngs don't seem to really have as much oomph as an mvp we can look at blake snell as a good example as a multi cy young winner and he did not get a great deal and on top of that people don't really believe in him long term or in the hobby uh pitchers aren't how they used to be and when i say that i've already mentioned it they just don't have the same uh it's not even their fault right the same longevity a lot of times it's just the way the managers like to manage baseball nowadays where they like the bullpen and they only let pitchers go twice to the batting order then let them face a third time to preserve the lead and whatever right i know a lot of old heads in baseball uh, i don't like that and i understand it entirely and there also is huge downside potential right so here's a matt harvey i actually showed this on my channel before so if you've seen this you're not crazy i've shown it but we can see this card went from six Sixty two hundred dollars to seventy six dollars. It was numbered one out of twenty five. It sold on June eighth for uh, sixty two hundred dollars in twenty fifteen, and just a few years later, it went down to seventy six dollars. And this is what pitchers have. Every single player when you're buying these high end type of cards, they have downwards uh, like risk. So it's one of those things where that downside potential can really screw you over. But it's especially apparent with pitchers. And we're seeing this, Shane McClanahan, he has Tommy John, Brandon Woodruff, out for the year, Shohei Otani, he had a second Tommy John, Walker Bueller, he's been out for a year and a half, Dustin May is out, Jack Flaherty's out, basically every major pitcher has burnt you in the last couple of years if you're looking to collect modern pitchers. We can talk about Walker Bueller, Jack Flaherty, Shane Bieber, Alec Manoa, Max Fried, Michael Soroka, Sandy Alcantara, Yuri Perez, Shane McClanahan, Jacob deGrom, Chris Sale, Julio Arias. This one's more so because of personal issues. Same with Trevor Bauer. But either way, there is not a good track record for modern pitchers. Back when, uh, who was it? Clayton Kershaw, Max Scherzer, 2008, Justin Berlander, 2005 for sports cards. That is Greenkey in 2002. Those are like the modern pitchers that have a lot of value right now currently. But once they retire, there is no clear-cut Hall of Fame pitcher. You could say Garrett Cole's almost there, but he just got hurt, right? They said he's only out a month or two, but it's the Yankees. They kind of always lie about injuries, I feel like. And it's fine that they do that. They're protecting the player and the team, but it makes it tough. So let's talk about pitchers who run on the right path 
prior to injury. And here's three examples. Chris Sale, if you don't believe me that Chris Sale was on the right path, his cards were big for a long time and they still go for some decent money. And he was kind of on top of the world for a little bit in the late 2010s. And then he had injury issues and the hobbies kind of turned on him. His cards are still a little bit pricey, but it's one of those things where he does not have a clear Hall of Fame path. He's with the Brave trying to reinvent himself and he, he really could. He really could. He's looked great in the spring. But again, he gets injured a lot. Then we have Jacob deGrom, who when he pitches, he's one of the best pitchers, at least according to uh, ERA Plus all time. I know that sounds dramatic. My dad does not like Jacob deGrom when you actually talk about war because he always says, how can this player have eight war when it's only won 11 games? And I get that. <laughs> I get that thought process. And pitcher's war, you can kind of discuss if you think that's really a great metric compared to you know hitter's war. But overall, Jacob deGrom, great peak when he plays, but he doesn't play. And Steven Strasburg, kind of tragic. He will never pitch again. I think it's nerve damage and other things. But for a time, his cards looked great, especially after the World Series. Also, he was very sought after when he debuted. Everybody wanted his cards. So we can see there are pitchers who are on the right path and they just get hurt, even at their peak when you expect them to be a Hall of Fame caliber pitcher. And I do not want to add Garrett Cole to this list, but he could be. And I'm not hoping that or wishing that upon him, but it could be. So I want you to look at the top pitchers since 2013. This is a, by war, right? So I kind of just bashed war, but overall, I like war. And it's a good way to look at a player's overall resume without having to dive too deep into stats. We can see the top pitchers since 2013 are Chris Sale, Jacob deGrom, Verlander, Cole, Kershaw, Max Scherzer. We see Grinky down here at number eight. He played a lot in the 2000s, debuted in 2004. Corey Kluber doesn't really have any value. But outside of those top players, this list is sad. There's no real Hall of Fame obvious player on this list. Maybe Adam Wainwright, maybe, but he doesn't really have a lot of other stats that are needed to get to the Hall of Fame. But I do like Adam Wainwright, great guy, and I think he has potential. But overall, that's where we're at from 2013. Since 2018, we have Garrett Cole, Zach Wheeler, Max Scherzer, DeGrom, Aaron Nola, Justin Verlander. Again, there's nobody that is debuted in this era that stands out. And that's the issue. Since 2020, we have Wheeler, Burns, Gosman, Nola, Cole, Scherzer, Alcantara, Logan, Webb. Since 2023, this last year, Zach Wheeler, Spencer Strider, Kevin Gosman, Sonny Gray, Garrett Cole, Zach Gallen, Justin Steele, Logan Webb, Zach Eflin. You get the idea. There is just not feeling that this is really catching on in the hobby. And let's talk about that. So are there any pitchers to target since 2015? So there are a few. I think you could target Yuri Perez, even though it's injury uh, injury issues. He was 21 this last year, or he was 20 this last year. He's anyone who's age 21 season this year. And yes, he's injured, but as long as he avoids Tommy John or any UCL damage, I think he's a great option because he is really good for analytics, advanced and traditional, and he's young, has enough time to build a Hall of Fame resume. Corbin Burns, he only has like 19 war through his age 29 season, so not really. That's another issue. They usually de debut later on average. That's why someone like Yuri Perez can be so enticing. Spencer Strider, I think, is the clear, obvious player since 2015 you might want to target. And that's because he's going to just dominate in strikeouts. And he added a curveball, I believe, in spring training and is making hitters look silly. But are there any Hall of Fame pitchers right now? Outside of veterans, are there? I'll let you answer that question in the comments down below. Do you think there's really anyone that has a chance? I think Garrett Cole is the closest. And there's just a big young pitcher drought when it comes to values and sports cards. Even though they might be valuable according to metrics, it hasn't translated yet. So there may need to be a reckoning where we're realizing Hall of Fame caliber is more in regards to dominance and peak over that player's time period. So who's the best player of the generation? Unless comparing to someone like... So, Cy Young's a bad example. Let's say Randy Johnson or Pedro Martinez that pitched not that long ago. No one's going to ever compare to them again, in my opinion, just because of the way that managers and teams handle pitchers. Young pitcher injury issues are very apparent right now. It's amazing how many injuries are out there. It's, it's pretty insane. It seems like every young pitcher has an issue. And now that pitchers are focused on below spin rate and more, I think that's going to continue. So I actually had a list of all of the top fantasy picks. And again, I, I don't want to beat a dead horse here, but it's one of those things where it just shows that there's nobody even getting drafted right now that seems like they're on a Hall of Fame path, which is tough. So the, here is actually going to be uh, Paul Skeens, who is the number one pick overall. And we can see he's the number three prospect in Major League Baseball. I wanted to show his cards and show how little they're going for for the hype that he has and the value he could have according to scouts and you know his draft position. Obviously, he has not played yet, which is probably why these cards are more expensive. But every once in a while, we'll see with Bowman Chrome, certain players have a lot of value, and it has not happened for Paul Skeens yet. You can see he's ahead of Junior Caminero, behind Jack. Jackson Churio and behind Jackson Holiday, ahead of Wyatt Langford, Evan Carter. You get the idea. And I think we'll see him this year. And I don't think that's a very bold take on my part, as long as he pitches well. And maybe we'll have some hype then. But overall, I think people are realizing 
it's tough. So is there an opportunity with his cards though at this price and the way the hype machine works in prospecting potentially? Yes, in my opinion, but it's still a tough, risky guess when we look at Hall of Fame odds for position players versus pitchers. It is skewed so much more towards position players making it because so many pitchers debut year over year and it's tough to get lightning in a bottle. So again, hitters versus pitchers, we can see these two players from the same set, Griffey and Randy Johnson. Both are all-time greats in their respective, you know, positioning. We can see Randy Johnson, five Cy Youngs, Griffey had an MVP, 10 All-Star Games, uh, World Series MVP for Johnson, four ERA titles, triple crown for pitching. You get the idea. Hall of Famer, Griffey has a little bit more desire when it comes to off-the-field stuff as well, and and he's like an icon for the generation, but still, we can look at Griffey, his PSA 10, 89 upper deck card goes for $2,000. Not fair to Randy Johnson because overall, one's iconic, one's not. But still, from the same set, it goes for $112 versus $1,800 to $1,900. Then we can look at someone else. I looked at Pedro Martinez, looked up the all-time high sales. The all-time high sales for Pedro Martinez, we can see, is $5,800 for his most expensive card and only two cards over $3,500 and three cards, well, four cards, including the $6,000 sale, over $3,000. What about Jose Canseco, right? Jose Canseco has a big collector's base, but he's not a Hall of Famer. He had steroid allegations. He'll never get to the Hall of Fame, most likely. But he has one, two, three, four, five sales over five thousand dollars. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and more over three thousand dollars. And it's just tough. Obviously, some of these sales could be fake, uh, like these air cards. I have no idea. There's even higher sales and more sales of these players who aren't as good like in regards to all-time discussion like Pedro Martinez was but they still have more collectors after them because they're hitters so that's kind of where we're at will the hobby ever adapt to pitchers pitchers will emerge in the future and I think they will have Hall of Fame pitchers again it might be a little bit and I think the definition of Hall of Fame pitcher may change and once that does and once we understand that that's when we might actually see more value in pitchers but overall, pitchers are tough, risky investments. So just be aware of that. If you ever wondered why, I hope this video kind of answers that question on why pitchers don't have a ton of value. But I only collect one pitcher, and that's Zach Greinke, and that's because I like him on the field and off the field. I think he's fun. I think people like, you know, his battle with mental health, all of that. And so overall, that's my thoughts on pitchers. I just kind of wanted to look into this myself and share my thoughts with you as it doesn't make sense why it's such an important part of the game but they don't have value. Other than that, let me in the comments down below what your thoughts are, and I will see you in the next video.